Don't you see? Your so-called righteous Christian churches will never accept you as being ex-gay because they know there is no such creature. Sounds great, but put it in the real world. See how far you get. That's not true. I know that Jesus has changed my life. He's changed mine. I believe in Jesus. But you can't continue in sin and still be saved. Being gay is the way God created us. If it's a sin, it's God's sin, not ours. God gave us a special love for each other, and love is from God. You're telling me you, you have no more love for me. Maybe you'd better just ask yourself if, if this isn't just a good way to break off the relationship. Where you can condemn me and feel right about it yourself. Mark, you don't understand. When Jesus came into my heart, I was cleansed by his blood. I felt cleansed and washed inside. Mark, God has given me an even greater love for you. And I want more than anything for you to receive Jesus Christ and repent of your sins. What sins? God accepts the gay just like he accepts anyone else. The person, but not the sin. Suppose I'm going to go to hell because I, I drink a little or smoke a few joints. You don't belong out on that ranch. You belong here writing, helping to rid this country of its bigotry. These people are filling you with hate and prejudice. It's real love that involves obedience and self-control. That's the real love of Jesus, Mark. Well, our relationship was centered in lust, not love. Sounds like you've learned an important truth. Stephen, thank God you're here. How are you, Roger? I've been very concerned about you. He's had some heavy indoctrination that's turned him against us, Stephen. I sensed there was something wrong. You didn't follow through on the platform for the convention. How about these things happen? Roger, I want you to know I'm here as your friend. I bear no resentment. I want to help you any way I can. Jesus Christ has changed my life. He's condemning me and our relationship as a being of the devil. And maybe it was. Any relationship that's not centered in genuine love is wrong. Be it a heterosexual or a homosexual. The Lord may have convinced Roger he didn't really have a love for you. In that case, it would be wrong. And it would cause him to feel guilty. No, that's, that's not true. I believe that what your church is teaching is deceiving a lot of people and keeping them from the truth. Did these people tell you that you were no longer gay? No, the power of God set me free. Well, I know when the Holy Spirit filled my life, I was free. What's happened to you has happened to a lot of people. You'd be surprised if you knew how many in my congregation have gone through a similar experience. Sooner or later, they realize they can't change God's creation. Can you honestly tell me that since you've been gone, you had not one desire for Mark or any other man? Can you tell me all the old emotions are gone? I've been tempted. The temptation doesn't mean that I haven't changed. Do you really think you can change, Roger? What happens in a month, maybe a year from now, when you're married? What do you tell your wife? How do you tell your children they're just a part of the cover-up? Oh, you can lead a heterosexual life if you want to bad enough. But you'll always be gay, Roger. 
You'd be surprised how many people in the congregation suffer needless guilt because of this kind of dogma. God loves us as we are, Roger. Stephen has been doing a beautiful job. And as you know, the church is already too small to handle all the people that need love and affection. While you are away through Stephen's efforts and others, the city has given a large financial grant to help meet the needs of the gays in Hollywood. Roger helped us in writing the proposal. Right, I forgot about that. We're being opposed, but to the mass media and the churches, we're overcoming. Don't desert us now. As Mark mentioned, our church is too small. You know the Lord is blessing us. This is Roger's friend, Tony. Anthony. Stephen Knight. Stephen pastors the United Gay Church. Are you packed right? Are you with a church? I'm with a discipleship ministry near Santa Barbara. Isn't it beautiful to see the things the Lord Jesus is doing in the world today? I had a bad heroin problem before Jesus came into my life. Uh, how long ago was that? It's about three years now, praise the Lord. The Lord's able to do great things. I suppose Roger has shared with you already about his new life. Well, I think it's unfortunate that you and so many others like you condemn something you know so little about. First, let me say Stephen, I think you should know that they didn't have to tell me that the way I was living was a sin. I already knew it in my heart. I just want to say that everything anybody needs to know about sin is right here in the Bible, whether it be in the form of adultery, homosexuality, sex outside of marriage, or whatever. Jesus didn't say anything against being gay. Mark, if, if you believe that the Holy Spirit inspired the Bible, you have to accept that homosexual acts are widely condemned throughout Scripture and by Jesus Christ, who is God. Jesus really loves you, Mark. You must remember, Mark, we're to be loving and not condemning like those who persecute us. Don't you recognize sin? If you were born gay, you're supposed to be gay. If you're born with a tendency to sin, regardless of what the sin is, that does not make it right. I'm single, and I battle the temptation of the flesh, but through Jesus Christ, I have victory. I agree to have sex with whomever and whenever is wrong. But when there's a commitment, it can be right in the eyes of God, regardless of whether it's the same sex. God destroyed Sodom because of what... God was... destroyed Sodom for the attempted rape of the angels and their inhospitality. Paul deals with the same problem in the book of Romans. Romans in the first chapter not only condemns the lust, but also the actions of men with men and women with women. Now there's another passage I'd like to talk about. In Corinthians, it states very clearly that those of you who are immoral adulterers, homosexuals, and so on, will not enter the kingdom of God. And then it addresses the people of the church of Corinth. And such were some of you. They were set free from their sins, these sins, just as you can be set free through the blood of Jesus Christ. I can see you're very naive. Roger obviously has had a bad experience. And if this is the case, I'd be the first to say it should be dissolved. But there are hundreds upon hundreds who are in this kind of relationship that are perfectly content. I seriously doubt that. Why is it then that we have to depend on booze and grass to live a contented life? Well, I think Mark has been just as miserable as I've been. He's just afraid to admit it. That's not my experience. You would deny it if it was. You're assuming that all... I just want to tell you this. I tell you this in love. You are a tool in the hands of Satan, leading people astray through your carnal teachings. But you can be saved if you repent now through the blood of Jesus Christ. And I pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that it happen. That very line of thinking is what has the world in the miserable state it is today. No, it's not. It's sin. I'm not as naive as you may think I am, sir. 
I was heavy into drugs for years. My kid brother died of an overdose of drugs. I've seen the tragedy of it. And I've seen the tragedy of telling people that living a gay life is cool. I have a real burden for young people today who are being led astray and into sin, whether it be in the form of drugs or sexual perversion. Roger, we love you. Your friend here is very condemning of us. That in itself should tell you where you belong. I, I know where I belong. And I know to whom I belong. Anthony, would you help me to get my things to this? Sure. Is it, isn't there anything else we can do? God, I, I feel so alone and empty. Stephen, oh, Stephen, don't go. You gotta have someone to talk to. I cry out to God. I'm so far distant times like this when I need him most. Calm down. Relax. I'll fix you a drink, then I'll pray with you. We've got to look beyond our problems, our present circumstances. Try to focus your eyes on a bigger vision. The part that God wants you to play, fulfilling that vision. We've made tremendous strides in the last few years. We've had a lot of opposition. More and more business leaders, entertainers, key ministers, speaking out on gay rights. More films, television shows are dealing with gay relationships so that it's being accepted by a larger segment of our society. Barriers of guilt, sexual hang-ups are going down so that the youth of our nation may be free. And eat of the tree.